Hello and welcome to the second Contracts Expert video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to create a contract manually as opposed to importing the data from Estimator Express. I will say that this video is made with the assumption that you have watched the first Estimator Express import video as that goes over some of the basic principles that we're going to skip through on this demonstration. So without further ado, we're going to create a new contract. We will then choose the type of contract. In this video we're going to do a small works contract. It again gives us an option to import from Estimator Express if we want to, but in this case we are going to create our contract manually. So the screen, as you see, is the same as we had when we did the import, however this time there's no data pre-populated so we have to fill in a lot more data as we go. To start off with you could put in a quote reference and again we will set the date of the contract as whether it's published because that's the date that you create the PDF or you can actually specify a date of contract. You can specify when you're going to start work. Remember that if the start work is within 14 days you need to separately produce a start work now contract which we'll cover in the last of the videos in Contract Expert. The builder has been assumed to be yourself, that's been set up. So now here we have to start filling in new information. Starting off here with the client. So to do this we click on the address book button on the right hand side. We then click on add and as you can see here it's asking what sort of address this is that we're going to be adding. If I click on this drop down you can add different types of people. Obviously for this question it's going to be the client details. I'm quickly going to fill this in with some made up customer name. Okay, so these are made up details, but you get the idea. This is the same format for any address that you need to input into Contract Expert, whether it be a client, a designer, a subcontractor, etc. Once we've input the client, we can select him thus. We then, as per the imported estimate, go through the details of whether it's domestic, site address being the same or different. If the site address is different, we would do exactly the same process. We would click on the address book. Again, this would be a client's employer. And we would put in a second address, which we could then select. The rest of the screen we did cover in a bit more detail in the first video. Again, you can ask whether you're going to be using a authorised representative such as a lawyer. Do you have responsibility for dying work? Fill in your description of works. Whether or not you want to be able to send legal uh, notices to each other by email. So this isn't general chit chat, this is things which are actual contractual. And again, if you'd like to nominate an adjudicating board. For speed, I'm going to untick the verification button. So the next screen, this is the same as the import. You can choose any facilities that the client is going to supply. You can alter your start and end times, choose any work days. Fill in any site restrictions. Such as limited working hours, other limitations such as deliveries, etc. For CDM purposes, whether this is going to be a domestic or commercial. Who the principal contractor is, most likely going to be yourselves. If there's a principal designer involved in the job, you'd put their details in. Again, if they don't already exist, you would click on the address book button and add their details in. If a principal designer is not applicable for the job, you can select that. So this is the part where it now differs from the import as we now have no financial information so we now need to fill this in from scratch. So to start off with you're going to fill in the sales price to the client. I'm going to use some round figures here. 
Again, specify how the VAT applies and the VAT rate. Profit margin on your prime cost sums. If you remember, that is the items or laborers which are being supplied by the client, but he requires you to manage. How long the quote is valid for. So this will be making reference to the quotes that you've hopefully supplied to your clients at the start of the job. What the duration of the job is going to be. And as you now see with the price breakdown, we can start to fill in some information. I shall read out the statement here. If you're not importing your job from Estimator Express, use the table below to add a line by line detail breakdown of the cost of the job. We recommend that you add as much detail of the cost breakdown as you can in the section below so that you and the client, stroke employer, are very clear about what has been agreed in the contract. Use a new line for each item. As it says here, you can also leave this blank and you could refer the client directly to an estimate or a quote that you have supplied them. To do this, you would tick on this option. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to input some data. So quite simply, you would add a line, give the line a description. So in the same style for an imported one, I'm going to do this in build phases. How you want to break down the detailed cost is entirely up to you. I'm used to operating in the Estimator Express world where we tend to break things down by build phase, so that's how I'm going to set this up. Okay, I'm just going to add a few build phases here. You should get the idea from that. You would probably add 10 or 15 uh, in real life. Again, there's the option to add in a provisional sum. So this is any amount where you have guessed at a cost, for example, a complex drainage, uh, maybe some demolition where you're uncertain about what you're going to come across. So you can add in a line for that. So for example here, the demolition of an outhouse, I've guessed it's going to be about £2,500 but you're not quite sure because you don't know how substantial it's been built, what the slabs, if there's anything underneath it, etc. You get the idea. You can specify whether you want an advance payment, and if so, how much you would like that to be. An advance payment is due in X amount of days. You could say 14. So the final bill payment, you're going to specify how long after you've completed the job you will send the invoice and then how long after you've sent that invoice, the payment will be required. You have the option for retentions and the value of retention and retention period. You can choose whether you're going to be using milestones so you can link your payments to the build phases on the previous screen. However, you do need to add those in line by line again. Or you can do interim payments where you can ask for payment every 7 days or 14 days, etc. You can fill in any assumptions on the job. So on this screen you could add in any of the other documents. So for example any plans that you've had designed or you've designed yourself. You could add in the document and the reference. And of course you could refer to the estimate that you've supplied, schedule of works, etc. What we do is you click on the Add Document button, give it the reference who it was created by. If it's an estimate, it's probably going to be yourself. That's obviously me in this job. And the date of that document. We can have an option for any prime costs or PC sums, which are where the client is providing a material. You can actually opt to define this later. If you know the detail, you can add it in now, for example, a kitchen. And just the same, you can also add in the details of any subcontractors that the client is adding via, say, the route of having their electrician do some work on the job, but asking you to manage them. And there we go, and as before with the imported estimate, we've now completed that but we still have all the tabs here to go through and review 
each section of the contract. Video 4 will go into the publication of the contracts.